Welcome to the Sot Luge News Hour. This is Ginger Jeffries coming to you from the Phoenix desk. We're bringing you the top stories from across the globe. Here are today's headlines. Israel bombs Gaza after the deadly Nablus raid. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accuses protesters of, quote, trampling democracy. Presidential candidates sign a peace pact before the Nigeria election. Topping our news today, Israel's military has bombed parts of the Gaza Strip after Palestinian fighters launched several rockets amid tensions over an Israeli raid that killed at least 11 Palestinians in the occupied West Bank city of Nablus. The Israeli airstrikes targeted the El Shati refugees camp northwest of Gaza City. This is among one of the most densely populated areas of the Palestinian territory. Witnesses said that they saw at least eight rockets fired, while the Israeli military put the number of projectiles at six. The Israeli military said its air defense system intercepted five of the rockets, while the sixth fell in an unoccupied area. The rocket launches our response after the Gaza-based Palestinian Islamic Jihad group condemned the Israeli military's raid in Nablus as a, quote, major crime that the resistance must respond to. Hamas, which governs the coastal enclave, issued a warning saying the resistance in Gaza is observing the enemy's escalating crimes against our people in the occupied West Bank, adding that their patience is running out. Israel's in the spotlight once again as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has accused protesters of, quote, trampling democracy. He vows that his coalition will move ahead with controversial legislation to restrict the power of the judiciary. This comes after more than 100,000 people gathered outside the legislature in Jerusalem to protest against a vote on bills that would give politicians control over the appointments to the country's Supreme Court in addition to limit its ability to overturn laws. Protesters blocked major roads across the region and prevented some politicians from even leaving their homes. In a meeting with parliamentary members of his conservative Likud party, Netanyahu condemned the movement's leadership for threatening us with civil war and blood in the streets. Netanyahu's plans judicial changes have been met with some of the biggest protests Israel has ever seen in the two months since he returned to office. On the eve of the one-year anniversary of the Russian-Ukraine war, countries began to see the impact of international relationships at the start of the second year of the conflict. Washington declared Russian President Vladimir Putin a failure as Moscow revived nuclear threats. И потому укреплению обороноспособности мы, как и прежде, будем уделять приоритетное внимание, повышенное внимание, как и раньше уделим укреплению ядерной триады. В этом году на боевое дежурство заступают первые пусковые установки ракетного комплекса «Сармат» с новой тяжелой ракетой. U.S. President Joe Biden's visit to Kyiv showed Ukraine has allies that will not let them down. Best friend duo China and Russia's relationship only grew stronger as the two countries were able to team up, having China now supply Russia with weapons. China's decision to draw closer to Russia in its hour of need could actually realign global relationships fundamentally. Russia has so far presented itself as being in a contest with the U.S., which has provided Ukraine with the majority of weapons for the fight. The ongoing tit-for-tat has gotten nations from all over the world fearing Russia has ideas of nuclear war. Australia is making friends with every country and Ukraine is next on the list as the country will send drones to Ukraine and expand sanctions against Russian government, military and their media figures. 
This as a part of a pledge to stand with Kyiv for as long as it takes, they say. Announcing the new support on the first anniversary of Russia's large-scale invasion of Ukraine, the government said the sanctions would also target those spreading mistruths to justify the war. The donation brings the total Australian military assistance to Ukraine to more than $500 million. The Deputy Prime Minister, Richard Marlis, said the unmanned aerial systems will provide a battlefield intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capability to the Ukrainian armed forces as they continue to fight against the unwarranted aggression of Russia. The Foreign Affairs Minister, Petty Wong, said the additional sanctions were, quote, targeting those in the Russian government who are helping prolong this war, those also financing this war, and those spreading mistruths to justify this war. Coming up next, Turkey looks into contractors as hundreds of thousands of people are now left homeless. Stay with us. We're going to be right back after the break. Do you ever wonder what's behind the news? What is it that you are not being told? Going behind the news and finding the truth. Let the truth flow. Sat Rouge Network. Let the truth flow. Welcome back. This is the Salt Luge Network from the Phoenix Desk. Who's at fault in Turkey? That's what investigators are trying to determine as they widen an investigation into building contractors suspected of violating safety standards. This comes as the authorities rush to provide safe housing for the homeless following the powerful earthquakes that hit Turkey and Syria. 500 suspects have now been identified with 160 people arrested and many more still under investigation for their role in the collapse of buildings during the disaster. Opposition parties have accused Turkish President Erdogan's government of not enforcing building regulations and of misspending special taxes levied after the last major earthquake in 1999 to make buildings more resistant to the quakes. Erdogan, who faces elections in the coming months, has promised to rebuild housing within one year. Turkey started an operation to relocate people from tents to container cities. The first phase would be to move people into 15,000 containers. Big changes are happening as 18 presidential candidates of Nigeria's general election have now signed a second peace accord, this in a bid to prevent unrest surrounding the upcoming February 25th polls. The pact is to ensure the conduct of free, fair, credible, transparent and verifiable elections and the need to maintain a peaceful environment before, during, and after the 2023 general elections. The signing of the peace accord today comes at a critical moment in the electoral calendar. Campaign for presidential and national assembly elections ends at midnight tomorrow, Thursday, 23rd February, 2023. Election will hold on Saturday this week. INIC is ready. It also calls for placing national interest above personal and partisan concerns. The signing organized by the National Peace Committee and the KUKA Leadership Center was in the presence of African and international leaders. Committee officials said the accord was meant to bind political parties, candidates and their supporters to resort to constitutional means if in fact they are not satisfied with the election. Political tensions right now as Mexico's Senate has approved a reform of the country's electoral institute. Opponents say the move will undercut democracy. However, Mexico's president contends it will save money and reduce political privileges. Lawmakers voted in favor of the controversial overhaul of the body overseeing the country's elections. <laughs> Opponents immediately said they will challenge the changes to the Supreme Court. 
Due to this move, protests are already being planned in multiple cities. President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador said he needs to enact the measure, which would reduce the size of the institute and also limit its powers. The changes will cut the budget of the National Electoral Institute, causing staff to be let go and offices to be closed. The president proposed the initiative known as Plan B in December after he didn't get enough votes in Congress for a congressional reform that included more electoral changes. The president also has repeatedly denied that the reform package could pose a risk to elections. A former U.S. president pointing fingers at current president Joe Biden. This following the derailment of a train carrying toxic materials in Ohio earlier this month. Speaking during a visit to the town, Trump said the residents had experienced a, quote, great betrayal and accused the Biden administration of failing to mount a robust response after the accident spurred fears of air and water contamination. The Biden administration hit back, pointing out that during Trump's tenure, the government rolled back regulatory standards requiring trains carrying hazardous materials to be equipped with better brake systems. Trump and Biden could be squaring off against each other in the upcoming presidential election if they are both selected as the nominee for their respective party. Trump launched his campaign last November, while Biden has yet to officially declare, but he has said he will run for a second term. Trump, meanwhile, is being challenged for the nomination in the Republican Party by candidates like Nikki Haley, who's the former U.S. envoy to the United Nations. Coming up next, the World Health Organization raises the alarm on pregnancy risks. Stay with us. We're going to be right back after this break. Life is not scripted, never foretold. No matter what happens and where it happens, open your eyes and read between the lines and never Stop asking questions or wanting to know more. Discover the unknown. Hear the human story. Be impartial. Be courageous. Find the untold story. And keep the pioneering spirit alive. Committed to truth. Sotluge Network. Let the truth flow. Welcome back. This is the Sotluge Network from the Phoenix Desk. A new report reveals disturbing trends in the death rate of pregnant women, causing the World Health Organization to sound the alarm. According to trends in maternal mortality, one woman dies during pregnancy or childbirth every two minutes. The report showed baby steps of improvement in those numbers between the years of 2000. Vegetable eaters in the UK want the skinny on the bare shelves in their supermarkets. Social media sites have been peppered with pictures of empty bins posted by shoppers looking for items like cucumbers and tomatoes. Britain's biggest supermarket group, Tesco, along with Asda, Morrison's and Aldi, now imposing purchase limits on some fruits and vegetables. Difficult weather conditions in the south of Europe and northern Africa have disrupted the harvest. This, according to Andrew Opie, Director of Food and Sustainability at the British Retail Consortium, which of course represents all the major supermarkets. Right now, experts say this disruption in the supply chain will in fact last a couple of weeks. 
two years in and the data reveal some positive outcomes from the conflict in Ukraine. This thanks to a technology bridge initiative where Ukrainian refugees evacuated from their country were granted temporary residency in Japan. Several actually finding work in the tech industry through a scholarship program for asylum seekers. Launched by the nonprofit Stand with Ukraine Japan, apparel tech company VirtuSize and investment firm NextBlue opened their door for refugees to take part in a coding book camp called La Wagon Tokyo. Students were given nine weeks of tech skills in order to become web developers and potentially lead to a job at a Japanese tech company. Now, more than 60% of the 2,000 Ukrainian evacuees in Japan have full-time employment. It's a crystal ball of sorts, and it's now giving scientists a glimpse into the past. Astronomers using the James Webb Telescope spotted six massive galaxies they say existed between 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. The Webb Space Telescope conducts infrared images, allowing it to view objects too old, distant, or faint for the Hubble Space Telescope. The recent discovery was published in the journal Nature. Co-author of the study, Joe Leha, from Penn State University in the United States, issued a statement saying, we expected only to find tiny, young, baby galaxies at this point in time, but we've discovered galaxies as mature as our own in what was previously understood to be the dawn of the universe. And those were our top stories for today. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Satluge Network, the news network that lets truth flow. For more information and for the full story coverage, just head on over to our website at satlujnetwork.com. And we'd also love to hear your feedback at info at satlujtv.com. We'll see you next time.